Hey guys, today we're going to do Black, the top 7 Black Magic, Magic the Gathering cards. Again, I'm basing my top 7 on how often they are played, uh, what formats they are played in, and if they're played in those formats, how dominant are they? And if it's EDH, Casual, Modern, Standard, I'm considering all of these facts. So, number 7, this member. I remember when this member was first released, a lot of people were very upset because they said, hey, it gives any color removal which is totally true this member is a fantastic card for non-black players that being said it is black and it is a unique ability number six reanimate for one black you can get back a creature any creature you want sounds like a good deal very good in the edh very good in tiny leaders good in any format that actually has a deck, a tier 2 deck reanimator with Grizzlebrand and friends and it's very good. Number 5, Damnation. Now I'm putting Damnation this high just because there's such, there is such a high demand for it in EDH, casual, kitchen table. People always ask for Damnation to be reprinted in From the Vault, Commander, any product that has reprints, people will clamor for Damnation. Number 4, Tassiger. Very strong strong card in standard, very strong card in modern, and even strong enough in legacy. So very few cards while in standard will see play in legacy as well. At the same time, it's still in standard. That's how powerful Tassigur is. There's no waiting time. There's no puzzle piece like Lion's Eye Diamond, for example, needs, you know, it needed a dredge mechanic to come later along. Same with Penhaven needed infect. A lot of those pump spells needed infect to make them very good. Tassigur, number four, you instantly understand why he is one of the strongest cards in Magic right now. Number three, Liliana of the Veil. Liliana of the Veil, when she first came out, she was 50 bucks, her, and then she went up to like 80, then she dropped down to 20, and then she went up to 50, and now she's back up to 80 or 90. She is more expensive than Jace the Mind Sculptor. She sees play in Legacy and Modern, as well as you know, EDH and all formats that can play her play her it also does not help hurt that her artwork is pretty fantastic in my opinion number two dot c's now this card i have put in my top seven all over the place it is just crazy it is bonkers crazy there's not very much i need to say about it but it gives you a huge advantage over your opponent it allows you to pick their best card and essentially trade it for a little bit of tempo. Now, number one, I don't have power nine. I don't have time walk and all that stuff. Demonic tutor, all that stuff on this list because for the most part, they are banned. So it's not like really playable, but I did want to put in dark ritual. The reason I wanted to play dark put in dark ritual there was a time dark ritual was in standard it sounds crazy but brainstorm used to be in standard and dark ritual mccadian mask and it was a time where the best play you could possibly make was turn one dark ritual into hypnotic specter and that was considered so powerful that it had to be banned and they actually <laughs> when they were going to reprint hypnotic specter people were so afraid of that card coming back because of the childhood memories they had of the card the card card actually isn't very good. The, I'll just point blank say it's not that good, but with Dark Ritual on turn one, it becomes very good. Now, I also remember, I think Invasion happened and they had Blazing Spectre at the time. So you had Dark Ritual into Blazing Spectre on turn two, and that was considered really, really powerful. That was considered too powerful. So Dark Ritual, I did want to put it on this list just because it did see a lot of extended and it did see a tremendous amount of standard play when it was in Macadia Mask. So it did dominate. I've never seen a card dominate a standard format like Dark Ritual did for Macadia Mask. And that was with Brainstorm as well. Very powerful card. I did want to mention it.